All right, here we're going to look at some derivatives involving the number pi. So, um, sorry about my little my little handwriting there. I did not like my A. So, in part A, we're going to find the derivative of 5 sine of 8 pi x. And the thing to remember is, you know, pi is just a number. Um, don't do anything different than you would any other times. Um, people sometimes see pi and they want to kind of do, I don't know, different things. So, uh, so here we'll leave the 5. Uh, that gets just gets carried along. So the derivative of uh, sine is going to be cosine, but here we're going to have to use the chain rule. So we'll leave the inside alone, and then we have to take the derivative of the inside. Well, again, if, you know, if it just said 8x, the derivative of 8x would just be 8, but that's not our number. The, derivative, uh, the number we do have is 8 times pi, so the derivative of that will just be, well, 8 times pi. And now if we multiply 5 times 8 pi will be 40 times pi. And then we have cosine of 8 times pi times x left over. And that's our derivative. So maybe let's do part, uh, part b here as well. So here we've got 4 pi times cosine of 3 pi x times sine of 3 pi x. Um, Again, we've got a constant out front. We'll just sort of leave that alone and multiply it back at the end. So let's leave the 4 pi alone. Well, now I've got to use both the product rule and the chain rule. So the derivative of cosine will be negative sine. Let's leave the 3 pi x alone. Then we have to take the derivative of the inside, which would be 3 times pi. And now we'll leave the sine of 3 pi x, we'll leave that part alone. Then we'll put the plus sign in between there, and now we'll kind of do the same thing. So now we can leave the cosine of 3 pi x alone. Well, if we do the derivative of sine 3 pi x, uh, again, this is where we'll have to use the chain rule. So we'll get cosine of 3 pi x, and then the derivative of the inside will just be 3 times pi. All right, so I think we've got it all in there. So um, let's see. In terms of simplification now, um, we've got 4 pi. OK, um, we've got 3 pi in here. I'm going to pull that out front. We've even got a negative, so let me make that negative 3 pi. Then we have sine of 3 pi x times sine of 3 pi x. I'm going to write that as sine squared 3 pi x. Then on the second, uh, our second term, again, we can pull the 3 pi. We have cosine of 3 pi x times cosine of 3 pi x. We can write that as cosine squared of 3 pi x. And I actually think we could factor out the 3 pi and maybe use an identity on this as well. Um, but for now, let's just leave it like that. Um, we'll keep that as our derivative. So again, just remember pi is a number, and that's all I'm doing is just treating it like an, another number. Um, so nothing different, still product rule, chain rule type problems.